Hello everybody, this is Dr. Novak. This is Coral Gables and uh, Coral Gables, Florida and from here we're going to head to Miami to the neighborhood fish farm. This uh, video is about a fish farm that nobody really has seen uh, one like it in the Midwest or anywhere for that matter. All the fish are in vats and the vats are actually uh, coffin vats, cement coffin vats that you put a coffin in. Anyhow, uh, we'll be doing that next, so stay tuned. Where we're at right now is at tropicalfishmiami.com. And this isn't about, uh, well, it's about 9.5 miles away from Coral Gable. And we are now going to enter this place. This is a, a strange aquarium store only because everything is located outside, which is something up north you wouldn't do because it would freeze. But uh, we're going to go in and I'm going to show you all the tubs that they have. They're not tubs. They're actually coffin containers cement coffin containers where the coffins go inside and they have hundreds of them so let's go in and find out what it's like so this is what it looks like when you first walk into the entrance as you can see there's a lot of people here and a lot of aquariums and the very front here where you're looking is where a lot of the plants are And, of course, you can see they have uh, neon dwarf rainbow fish, gold spotted orange, the costumus, rummy nose tetras, $4 or 3 for $10. But as you can see from here, a lot of plants goldfish. There is a uh, Ryunkin. No, that's an Aranda. It's an Aranda. He's just a little dirty. Black Aranda. That's what it looks like. Maybe it's not even that. It could even be a Celestial Eye or a Bubble Eye because one of the eyes are lower than the other or it could have a Popeye. Without examining it, you really don't know. It looks like here, they may have a molly. Right here. It could be that molly could be there mixed up with the goldfish. Anyhow. Snails. Ram snails. For the aquarium. Once again, we have a... It looks like right there is a wild molly. And of course here, they have another tub, goldfish. Let me see. It's hard to tell, but these could be mollies. Let's see, balloon mollies. Yep, I'm right. Balloon mollies. And apparently they have a mono shrimp. Let's see, three for twelve dollars or ten for twenty-five dollars. Definitely that that is a ten for twenty-five dollars. That is an excellent buy for a mono shrimp. Here they have tubs. With floating plants, but it says here, mm -hmm. do not disturb, not for sale. So they may have uh, something going on inside there. That looks like could be 
water poppy. And here it looks like some fry of some sort. And I have to look at them closer to tell you what it is. More snails. More plants, veils. It says do not disturb. It looks like it's a guppy. It looks like a guppy tank. And here, killifish. Very nice killifish. Let's see, killifish. Let's see. $25 a pair, male and female. $18 for the male alone. So that's about normal for killifish. Mix. Crystal shrimp are supposed to be in here. Here they are. Shrimp. Very tiny. Very, very tiny shrimp. And those are uh, three for twenty dollars. It looks like this is some flubal stratum. And this is uh, inside here. It's called King Kong Shrimp. So apparently, that's what they're calling King Kong Shrimp. Discus. Baby discus. And... Those are 25 a piece. Here you have some snails, okay. And lilies and snails. These are rabbit snails. Common name for them. Let's see. They don't have a price. They don't have a price what the rabbit snails are. But those are your rabbit snails. And of course more plants. Now, this is strange when you're here because you're literally outside looking at everything. Like, for example, you see the pencil fish, three for $10. It's very unusual aquarium. And then, of course, you have your snails here. You can buy snails here. I mean, this is, this is just the tip of the iceberg we're looking at here. Trophy Ops, Red Phoenix Trophy Ops, small as $30 and large as $60. I don't, let's see, no, that's an angel, oh here they are, there they are, right down there. Nice, very nice looking Trophy Ops. Yeah, that's there. Can't see it very good because the tank is scratched up. But believe me, um, well worth it. You don't see too many red trophy ups like that. So that is a, as far as I know, that's a pretty good deal. That's something you won't find in northern um, Florida. More goldfish. Some other fish are here. Let's. Let's see. Oh. That's a Japanese shibunkin. It's not a bristle shibunkin, that's Japanese. And of course, here's your severums. 
Look at that nice plant growth. Nice big severum. Oh, look at that. I think this is a, if I remember correctly, this tank here is a, a 90 gallon. Could be bigger, but I think it's a half 90 gallon. Now, the last time I was here, this tank here, as you can see, has plants in it. But the last time I was here, this thing was just full of plants, so literally all the way. So they must have sold a ton of plants. And this is what the vats look like, to give you an idea. These are li literally made for coffins to be set in. And then the coffin gets set into here, the vat. And uh, then there's a cement lid that goes on top of here. But they bought them, and they've been using them for the fish at all. Now, the only thing a bad about this is um, these, these right here, they're going to let off a lot of line. And that may happen for the first year or two. And then after that, they'll be safe for fish. And as you can see, there is a, a, an egg, snail egg. That's a snail. Could be a mystery snail. There's a lot of snails in here. What I see is a lot of ram and just a few mysteries. Some goldfish, nothing much in here. Over here is guppies. Snake skin guppies are in here. You can't see them very well. A lot of reflection. Need a polar, polarized lens. More guppies. This whole thing is just full of guppies. I bet you in this one container there's probably 200 guppies in this vat. Then we come to another vat. White Moscow guppies. Once again, the vat is full of mystery snails. And then we come to another one. Dumbo ear guppies. And pink tail guppies. And as you can see, I bet you there's about a hundred guppies in there. So there's Plenty of guppies for the guppy lover here in Florida. It looks like, let's see, this says moonlight gouramis and pearl gouramis and gold gouramis. I'm going to say those are the. Here they come, moonlight gouramis, and there's some gold gouramis in there. So, for the grommy lover, and something you really don't see much in a fish tank is the grommies are actually schooling in here, following each other. Something you don't see in a small fish tank. Here, now we're starting to get into cichlids. And as you notice, their filtration system is basically a drip system. Uh, there was a store in Chicago called Grand Aquarium, and they used a drip system. And what this is, is fresh water constantly being dripped in. And then, of course, it's being dripped in. And then you have your exit. 
your drainage. So these tanks are constantly being replaced with fresh water. And they're not on a central system as far as, um, you know, filtration system. This is all fresh water constantly being added very slowly. Here is a big tub full of brown uh, arandas. Or chocolate arandas, brown arandas, or chocolate arandas. Most people call them choc chocolate arandas. And with some quarries. Let's see. Quarries. Let's see. The arandas are two for $32, and the quarries are three for $12. So you got quarries in here, and then you have your smaller arandas in this tub we have arandas and guppies mixed the tub next to it once again more guppies Next tub, more guppies. I don't know what the price of these are. They're not showing a price. Another tub full of guppies. And of course, we have another tub full of guppies. Some of these tubs are full of over 100 plus guppies. Nothing like you see in a fish store. Another tub full of guppies. Once again, there's probably a good 200 or more guppies in here with some quarry. Maybe the price is, it's kind of like a set price with these guppies. So each tank is the same price. It's kind of hard to see. Here's some more guppies. Another tank and another tank full of, what's this, guppies and some goldfish, along with some quarries. And we have some arandas in there. Chocolate arandas along with the orange. Here's a tub full of babunas. And these are blue Kenny eye. I had a Kenny eye, not the blue one, but the yellow Kenny eye. And they were real, real yellow. But these are blue Kenny eye in here. And this is we're coming into your babunas. Here's some more. Electric blue Johanni. They're pretty nice. They are about three for eighteen dollars. Not a bad price. Yellow yum Lombardo. That's the yellow fish that's in there. Lagunas. Okay, here we go. Here's some good one. Dubossii. This is one that a lot of people like. Now, I've seen fish tanks with nothing but these. In the, these are juveniles. They change as they get bigger, but nothing but these and a fish tank. What are they? Uh, Two for twenty-five dollars. 
So they're two for $25. You yeah, know, the fill a fish tank with these is going to cost you a few hundred dollars, but I've seen fish tanks with at least, oh, I'm going to say 15 of these, and that's it. Just, just that. Do bossy eyes? Yeah, they, they, uh, they're very beautiful if you just have a tank with them only. So, gives you an idea. Here's some goldfish, some more mabunas. Blue ACI, golden trophy ops, comets. It's, it's amazing that the goldfish can be put in with the mabunas. But that's what we're looking at here. The blue ACIs, look at them. It's, it's hard to see them from the side. I know a lot of people will say, I can see them from the side, but they're very neat looking fish. Let's see, those are three for 18, and the Golden Trophy Ops are three for $18. Not bad, that's not a bad price. Blue Demasonii's cichlids. Three for twenty dollars. I don't know if that's a good price or not for Africans. Here's a Masobo cichlids. And these are three for twenty-five dollars. And these are blue African horrors. And albino compressives. Not, not a fish that a lot of people want. They don't want the compressives. Here looks like goldfish. Blue, blue dolph dolphin. Blue dolphin. Where, where in the hell is the blue dolphin? Oh, I don't see any. <laughs> this must be empty. Because all I see basically is comets. There's more tanks over here. Also has some uh, Jack Dempsey's in here, snails. Green Victorian cichlids. Oh, nice looking, nice looking cichlids. The last time I was here, Last time I was here, this was full of goldfish. Now they have cichlids in here. Ice blue cichlids, compressives, and albino zebras. Eh, I'm not too keen on albino zebras. You know, they're they're like okay. They're some people like them. I'm not that crazy about them. What are what are these? They almost look like an elongatus, don't they? But they're not. Main banner. Yep, blue main banner. Three for twenty dollars. Ooh, these these look quite nice. A little different than just getting your zebras. Wow, for a person who has an African cichlid tank, I could see a whole tank full of these. These are absolutely beautiful. Just the colors really pop on these. I could see a tank with nothing but these. And, it, and I do apologize that the quality isn't as good as you would like, but uh, when you're here in person, it's unbelievable. Here we have some more Real nice Africans mixed with goldfish. 
Now the goldfish are in there, of course. Um, I'm only thinking they're in there to help eat algae and help keep the tank clean. Because for every tank, they have goldfish in them. Look at that. Every tank has goldfish, even with the Africans. More blue and white. These almost look like zebra now. And the dishes is uh, young mabunas, five for twenty-five dollars in this particular tank. It's not specifically saying what kind of mabunas; it's just saying young mabunas. Look at these. These are nice. These are the Victorians. Maybe try to get a better shot for you. Something you don't see a lot. You don't see these green Victorians. At least I have not seen a lot of these being for sale. Whether it be here in Florida or Chicago. I just don't see a lot of those. And of course you have more Mubunas here. Another tank, goldfish. That is strange that goldfish are almost in every single tank, no matter what the fish is. Not much here. Okay, these look like peacocks. Let me see. There's no sign, but boy, that looks like a peacock. I can't tell because you're looking at the side of it. And, of course, they have a plant back there that looks like it's uh, Hornworth. Once again, snails. Now, he, ooh, ooh, here. What are, what are these? Is that, are these Oscars? Oscars? Let's see. Yeah, I think they are. There's some red-tailed sharks in here, and I think the fish in here are nothing but normal Oscars. What are these convicts? Yeah, these are convicts. You know that that's nice though. They have they have like maybe fifty of these in here to give a person a big choice of what you want. Some more cichlids. These are not African cichlids though. Goldfish. Red jewel fish. There's one right there. It's an African fish. The red jewel. And of course, comets. And some other fish. Uh, green Texas cichlids are in here. It's amazing that they have everything mixed up with goldfish. More cichlids mixed up with goldfish. Maybe a Johanny's eye. More cichlids. These are all going to be your African cichlids. I mean, for the African cichlid lover, this is the place to come. More African cichlids. More cichlids mixed with goldfish. All the way down. Five more vats. Nothing but different cichlids.
Some of them are a little hard to see because you're looking down on top of them. Small blue peacock. Red fin. Flying foxes. Flying foxes. Okay, where are you? Where are the flying foxes? Well, I don't see any flying foxes. Nope. Sorry. No flying foxes. Now in here, they have young red shower peacocks. Sunshine peacocks. And, of course, you have your comets in here. Now, these comets, of course, are just going to be your Japanese varieties. They're not going to be the Shabunkins. And if we look over here, you see a whole tank full of goldfish. Arandas and Ryunkins. Let's see, $30 each. Here's a tank full of black moors. Now, let me look at these black moors for you. Mmm, I would not rate these as a very high class of black moor. Okay, they, these black moors are, uh, well, they're only eight dollars. Eight or ten dollars. Looks like it's come off, but eight or ten bucks for these black moors. No, they're not going to be show quality. These are not going to be your big, fat black moors that you would expect. These are elongated moors, and this is a, this is a prime example, these moors that you're looking at here, of really what you don't want to buy in a goldfish. Well, if you just want to buy a pet and it's cheap, yes. If you want to buy a more of a show quality, no. No, these these are not going to be uh, what you're looking for. Not these moors. These are, these are more for people who buy goldfish and don't know what they're buying. These moors are. But I guess for the price, a lot of people would say, oh, they're, they'll, they'll, they'll make a nice pet. Yeah, they, they will. They'll just make a nice pet. And these are celestial eyes. And it looks like, oh, yeah, Ryunkins and some celestial eyes. Now, I don't really get into celestial eyes. It's a little, I don't know, it's a little too much of a goldfish for my taste because they look a little weird. Here, let me show you one close in case no one's ever seen one. Here's a close-up of a celestial eye, and I don't know, to me, they're just a little bit going over the top with goldfish. There's, there's one down there, celestial eye. Not my cup of tea for goldfish, but some people I understand love them, but they're not my cup of tea because they're too much for me. <laughs> and, of course, here we got a tank full of Ryunkins. Now, Ryunkins are the most easily the breed of goldfish so these are the ones that uh, a lot of your breeders will, will breed because they're so easy to reproduce than your other strands let's say like your celestial eye or your um, arandas going to be a little harder but uh, your ryunkins and in here they have gold arandas red and black arandas and it says they have gold angel fish, but I'm going to be honest, I don't see any in this tank. Basically, I just see goldfish. And I do see some ryunkins and arandas in here. Here, these are a little bigger. These are going to be arandas. They have no hoods. So when you buy an aranda of this size and they don't have any hoods, understand myself, I would say stay away from them. These are what I would call pet Arandas, these goldfish. These are strictly 100% pet. They really don't have much of a head. They should have a lot bigger heads on them at this age, but they don't. So I would say this is not a quality goldfish. It's a pet goldfish, but 
if you want something that's quality that really uh, you would be proud of, nah, stay away from a fish like this. And these are, uh, they said it has red caps. No, there's no red caps. Medium Miranda's two for 50 bucks. So they're 25 a piece. I don't know. I would, see me, I'd put that 50 bucks towards a better quality goldfish and have one nice quality goldfish versus having two okay quality goldfish. And here we go with more Ryunkins and Aranda's chocolate. Let's see. Bamboo shrimp are supposed to be in here. There's some Harnworth in here. Um, let's see what size. $60 each. And here's some bigger Aranda's. Um, just by what I can see, tank. You know, just, just a nice pet. Here's one that's fat. You can't see them very well, but comes in the bubbles. But um, maybe that one, I'd have to look at it. I'd have to pull it out and actually look at it. That's another thing about goldfish. If you don't know what you're doing, maybe take somebody with you who could look at them and judge for you if they're worth buying. Because any goldfish that's really top quality, worth buying, it's going to cost you. Uh, some good bucks and everybody knows that the ones that are mediocre pets they're going to cost you a lot less but believe me they're never going to grow up to be anything except a pet you know they're, they're not going to be anything I'll be honest with you that you can be really proud of they'll just be pets uh, here we have uh, Severums and uh, Ranch shoes, two for twenty-five dollars. Now, ranch shoes are real, real tricky. Uh, there's black ranch shoes in here. You know that color will probably be lost as they get older. That is not a stable gene inside these ranch shoes. The stability of the gene to keep black uh, is related to the eyes, which the black moors have, and they found that that gene is connected to the eyes of the goldfish and when you get goldfish like this they're real tiny like these little bitty ranch shoes here uh, don't expect that black to stay once you get it in your aquarium okay um, it, it probably will lose it due to the fact that they're um, not eating the algae profusely like they are in something like this so that's a recessive gene and it's going to more than likely uh, lose its black more and more. Uh, I bought some ranch shoes for the 48 gallon breeder and the, one of the ranch shoes has lost most of its black already. Very common. So don't expect that if you're going to buy black fish that they'll stay black once you put them in your tank. Most likely they're going to lose a lot of that black or lose all of it. Now here's a tank full of, uh, now I don't care for this either, uh, neon colored tetras. Okay, and I'm not really a big fan of fish like this. I guess they're good for younger people, kids, but uh, not adults. This is, these are not... These are not fish I would think adults would like. This is something a kid would like, but not adult. A neon colored Tetris. Thanks, but no thanks. And here we have barbs. You have your tiger barbs, and then you'll have your albino barbs. I would say there's about maybe 25, 30 barbs in here. Now, barbs are the kind of fish, though, you have to remember. Barbs do real, real good in algae tanks. Believe it or not, they show their best colors if you have a tank that has algae in it, and they'll nibble off that algae. So if you kind of get them starving and hungry, they really, really will color up off the algae that they'll be picking on. That's one little secret with barbs that people don't know about. But uh, tiger barbs and all, if you ever see them eating algae, oh, they're just absolutely gorgeous. Tiger barbs are, but a lot of people don't know that. Here's some goldfish, and they... Uh, 
they don't want their sides of their aquarium getting full of algae and therefore the tiger barbs can't pick on it but they're they're almost like a goldfish here we got albano tiger barbs rosy barbs and uh, ruby barbs in here and probably i would say a good 100 150 barbs in this tank And I do apologize if things aren't coming out as great as they should be. Dojos are in here. It looks like dojos you have in here. They're, they're a good fish. These dojos are a good fish if you want to keep. Or is that a loach? No. Can't really see. Uh, large fin tiger barbs are supposed to be in it. I don't see any of them. Rainbow sharks and no, I don't see a lot. Must have sold them, all of them. Here's a pond with duckweed as you can see and of course it looks like we have uh, miniature water lilies here. Let's see, we got bola sharks in here, more barbs, tea barbs. They're all in the back there. Let's see if I can get a better picture of them for you. Good, good size tea barbs. They're all running away because my camera's scaring them. Anyhow, they're good sized T barbs, I would say. Almost four inches. This one has uh, boa sharks and then platinum tinfoil barbs. Strawberry tiger barbs. Now, strawberry tiger barbs, if you've never seen them, they're real, real bright red. And once again, if you can get them to eat algae, they really look good. They're very impressive. I haven't really, strawberry tiger barbs, I really haven't seen very many at an aquarium store. The, if you ever see them and you're thinking about it and you're on the fence about them, they are very nice, very, very colorful, very impressive in the sunlight. But you have to remember, algae will get them really colored up. Tinfoil barbs, panda barbs. I mean, when's the last time you've you seen tubs just full of barbs in, uh, in your local pet store? Green tiger barbs, severums. I don't see any severums. Heckleyi cichlids, young tiger barbs. And we haven't even covered the whole thing. Still tubs and tubs and tubs here of fish. I think, let's see, these could be platies. Let me check it out. Nope, they're not platies, they are mollies. Like I said, it's very hard to see them because you're looking down on them. But these are all mollies. In fact, everything you see here, everything you see here, every tank is full of mollies. So for the person who loves mollies, this is the place to come. It's just one tank after another full of mollies.
this looks like Severums. Angel, yeah, green, green Severums. Now, these are pretty good sized Severums and they're about 35 a piece. Um, that's not a bad price for these. Very nice. It's a shame you can't see them close because they have a blue ring around their eyes. And uh, they really look spectacular. These Severums do. Now I can see a tank just full of these green Severums just by themselves. There's some angels in there, but there's there's one cup. Oh wow! Look at the red fins. Very very nice, very nice looking green Severums. Thirty five dollars a piece. So if somebody wanted a species tank, these guys really by themselves. But you have to remember too, the reason these could be so colorful, there's a lot of algae in here that they can constantly pick on. And of course, they're getting direct sunlight. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful green severums. The blue around their eyes, you actually have to see it. It looks like it's lit up. Mollies, more mollies. Orange mollies. More mollies. These are chocolate mollies. Now that's something you don't see Really, fish stores by me are up north, but this is full of chocolate mollies. And they do. They look like the chocolate arandas. Very neat looking. They look like the front half is chocolate and the back half is going to be a little darker, almost still carrying the gene of the black molly, which they were probably a derivative of the black molly. Here's some more mollies. You can't see them very well. Here's something. Gopper catfish. Gopper catfish. Not for sale. I would say he's about uh, six, seven inches. Okay, now we're right out in the sun, and this is a tank full of, once again, the green severums. And these guys are big, and if these are the same price as the other one, here it is, severums, 45, okay. But these are good size severums. I could see a tank uh, full of them. Albino iridescent sharks. Are at the bottom, but the Severums look very nice. And because you're looking at top, you can really see the blue above their eyes, around their eyes. Very nice looking Severums. Catfish. And uh, let's see what we got. It looks like, it looks like there's koi. Yep, there's some koi in here. Okay, to be honest with you, that pretty much is going to wrap up this video. Um, basically, we are now out in the sun, and a lot of them are, there's a albino pacosmus in the corner there. But uh, a lot of these are covered up. Can't film them because they are covered. They're in direct sunlight. As you can see, there are just huge huge tubs of fish out here and they're all for sale and of course here you have bats of duckweed but all these fish are for sale and it looks like you got some tropical water lilies there with some miniature water lilies and then we have some bale grown out of this one but uh, as you can see everything's pretty well covered up because it is getting direct sunlight.
we are now going into uh, spring. Here's some sharks. Now, they, they look cool. When you look at them from on top, you know, compared to when you see them in a fish tank, you know, when you look at them in a fish tank, these sharks are always all bashed up. Their noses are bashed up. and But when you look at them from the top here, they actually look like they're sharks. You know, they could be a saltwater shark. So this kind of tells you that these sharks need a big, huge aquarium. The water doesn't have to be deep. I'm going to say the water can't be more than a foot deep. But this, uh, this has to be 8 foot by maybe 16 foot. And the sharks are perfect. Their noses don't have a big bump on them from smashing into the glass. And look how calm they are. They're actually schooling together. And they're real nice. They, they look like they're an actual shark from the ocean and not a freshwater shark. So anyhow, that's it. I'm going to wrap this video up. Uh, if you ever come to Florida... This is one place you may definitely want to visit if you're a fish lover. Uh, during different times of year, which I have been down here at different times of the year, um, these covers may be off, they may be on. It just depends on the time of year and how many plants they have. Once I was down there, they had a ton of plants that you could buy for the aquarium. Now, as you can see, they didn't have as many. So... This is, this is something that, uh, it, it depends on the time of the year when you're going to get down here. Like here's some koi with the Oscar in it. You know, you couldn't do this up north. You could probably put the Oscar in if you're lucky, maybe uh, summer. But down here, the Oscar can stay out 24-7 all year round. It's Florida. And... Uh, because of that, the animals grow a lot larger, a lot quicker here in Florida than they do up north, only because of the pond you can put them in. I mean, you can imagine if you put these Oscars in a pond, how huge they're going to get within a few years' time. They're going to get gigantic, same with your koi, because they're never really going to stop growing compared to up north where they will, they'll stop growing for the winter months and then continue growing when the water warms up. But uh, these will continue growing because the water probably doesn't get anywhere near a freezing temperature. Being these are so big that uh, the sunlight is going to keep it nice and warm through the infrared light that's going into these big, huge baths. So, anyhow, that's it for this video, and thank you very much for watching. This is Dr. Novak. Until next time.